Originally this video was going to be this long rambling spiel about why Life is Strange is special because of gameplay systems and choices you make and all kinds of boring stuff, but that's not really what Life is Strange is about. Instead I want to grab a couple threads out of the quantum yarn ball that is this game's plot and follow them to their ends. I think it'll do a better job of explaining why I think this game is so special. Please note that I'll be spoiling the entire game, so you should go play through it first if you haven't. First thread I want to talk about is the apocalypse. So Life is Strange is a rare example of pre-apocalyptic fiction. The game starts at its end with a giant tornado bearing down on the town, and this is a never treated metaphorically. This is something we know will happen. But to make sure you keep it in mind, the game slowly builds up a sense of dread over its five episodes. The first episode concludes with a freak snowfall which is used to survey the characters we've just been introduced to. Episode 2 kicks things up a bit this? higher, an unexplainable solar eclipse ends the episode on a mysterious note. But episode 3 is where things start to really ramp up. You come across a few dead birds while out and about on your adventures, but by the end of the episode entire pods of whales are washing up onto the beach. The progression from snow to legions of dead animals is a great one, and it gets capped off in episode 4 by a very Murakami-esque double moon. By the end of episode 5, the tornado doesn't feel like a freak accident so much as the capper on a week of gradually encroaching doom. In a game about time travel, murder, and suicide, these environmental images were some of the most affecting for me. So yeah, the time travel. This aspect of the game becomes more interesting as the game progresses because the way it is used starts to change. Initially, you use it to examine choice-based situations and redo any mistakes you think you might have made. This is a great idea. You're able to see the direct results of your actions, but never the long-term effects. Just like your character Max, you selfishly use time travel to repair the present without being able to know how it affects the future. This sets up my favorite moment in the entire game. For the first two episodes, you had been able to use time travel as a crutch to fix any mistakes. But at the end of episode two, things go very dark very quickly. Some crazy shit is going down at the girl's door. Zachary, do not come into my class like that ever again. Listen, everybody remain seated. Dismissed. Is this for real? Kate, your friend who has been struggling with crippling social pressure from just about every character in the game, attempts to jump off of the school's highest building. I have to do something to help her. Not again. Not now. I have to try something. I won't be able to rewind again and again. Max pushes herself to the limit to try to prevent this, and she actually freezes time around her to enable her to climb up to where Kate is to try to talk her down. But exhausted from the time freezing, her powers fail her. Suddenly, you're tasked with the most important choices in the game with no rewinding power at your disposal. The game lulls you into a false sense of security and then pulls the rug out from under you. Unless you had helped Kate along the way and know how to speak to her, there's nothing you can do to save her. This moment is not only a showcase for Life is Strange's narrative strengths, it also makes good on the concept of your choices carrying weight. It's possible to save Kate, but I wasn't able to. Max and I both had to live with that for the rest of the game. Midway through the game though, you gain the ability to go back much further in time by jumping into photographs. Not only is this a great integration of Max's Someday photography into the game's story, computers. but it sets up the unraveling of space-time that starts to happen I during the game's the final hours. You, the major example this in the game is a, is a jump back to your own childhood, where you can prevent your best friend Chloe's dad from dying in a car wreck. Do so, and you end up back in a very different present. Though Chloe's dad survives, the car he eventually buys Chloe leads her to a different car wreck that paralyzes her from the neck down. At the end of the sequence, Chloe, who we know in the first present to be full of life and energy, asks you to give her an overdose of morphine in order to put her and her family out of their misery. Again, time travel is used in the service of extreme moral choices that don't really have a right answer. From there, things start to completely unwind. You end up going back in time while on different timelines entirely, and entire years become mere playthings for Max as she tries to right as many wrongs as possible. By the end of the game, reality itself falls Seriously, apart, no. resulting in some fantastic imagery. In dark corner and capture you in a moment of desperate. Uh, this can't be real. Oh, Lieber. 
This is a game that focuses on the emotional and paradoxical aspects of time travel rather than the science, and I think it's much better off because of it. Lastly, I want to talk about a character that I think exemplifies Life is Strange as Strange, Chloe. I think Chloe is one of the most believable characters to ever be featured in a video game. Getting to learn about and experience how her life slowly unraveled makes all of her actions Chloe seem and her real and justified. So she mom, portrays just about every too. emotion a video game hey, character would need to portray over the course of the story, and it all feels Joyce, like it's coming from a real now? place. She's a teenage girl struggling with the loss of her father, her two best friends, and her own future. Holy that she deals sorry. with it by smoking weed and dressing I like a Pearl Jam mother, groupie, and by getting into really bad situations. Me doesn't ever seem like a stretch the of the way, imagination. Seeing paralyzed Chloe only cements how much Chloe is a real character who reacts appropriately to the world around her. I guess I should talk about the ending. I didn't mind it. The main problem people seem to have is that the game eventually boils down to one of two endings, which seems to fly in the face of the whole your choices matter thing. To me though, I felt like my choices did pander. They influenced the conversations I had with people, where people this were at certain times, storm. the way events unfolded. But as I neared the end of the game, it became increasingly it. obvious what had to happen. And when I that choice popped up, it felt like the natural conclusion to a very complicated and sad story. I don't think having 10 choices instead of 2 would have changed that, but I don't begrudge people for feeling that way. So yeah, I think Life is Strange is a phenomenal game. There are so many aspects of it that I love that I think are better experienced by playing than by me talking about them. But I can say it's the kind of game whose world you want to spend more time in after the credits roll. Its story touches on situations and ideas that I've never seen tackled in a game before, and it does so without feeling pandering or compromised. I put it at the very top of the list.